this video, I'm gonna show you three stories from one of the most powerful books I've ever read, which is Autobiography of a Yogi by Paramahansa Yogananda. This is the only book that Steve Jobs had in his iPad, and he read it every year the last 40 years of his life. I'm gonna share with you why that is, and why these three stories I share with you can change your view of reality itself. Welcome back to another video. My name's Aaron and I help people expand their consciousness. Now in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you three stories that when I read in the book, Autobiography of a Yogi, completely changed my perception of what reality is and how reality works. Because what you do and you see in that book is Paramahansa Yogananda, who is coined for bringing yoga to the West, he, in his process of enlightenment, met many different gurus, different, many different people in India. And what you do is you hear his first hand account of what it was like going through the enlightenment process and the mystical type experiences that he, had, that he had around other enlightened people that could do things that literally you would think are magic. Things that don't really even seem possible. Um, one of them that I, one little one I'll share right now that's not part of the three that I'm gonna share with you, even has to do with, for example, Yogananda, when he was a baby, um, was told by, Yogananda's mom said that, when he was a baby, he was told that he was gonna bring yoga to the West, he was gonna be a yogi, and what eventually happened is years later, when he was a young adult, his mom went to and was told by somebody that she didn't have that much longer to live and that she would then go into some form of meditation and in her hands would appear some type of jewelry that eventually she would give to Yogananda. So what she did is she went into meditation. This, they said it was an astrally produced uh, locket that was then appeared materialized in her hands and she later gave that to Yogananda after she died. She wrote a letter about this experience and gave it to one of her other sons to give to Yogananda at a certain point in his life. And it just shows that when people are around these gurus or these enlightened people, there is potential for magical things to happen. A lot of times when these gurus say something, these um, enlightened people say something, it's like they say it with so much certainty and so much power that it just comes to be true. You're gonna go home and you're going to instantly manifest something in your hands when you go into meditation that you'll eventually give to Yogananda. She goes home, she does that, and then this locket appears in her hand that she gives to Yogananda. Now, there are many, many different stories in this book. My challenge was going through and only finding three that I could explain in a video because otherwise it'd be like a very, very long video because there's so many cool stories from it. But the one thing that I would say the book does is it tears apart your belief about what reality is in a very positive way. It shows you that reality is much more than you think it is. Reality is much more than this 3D physical avatar. And uh, what you learn throughout reading this book is that you can start having more fun because you also become aware that reality is in a way like a dream. It's a cosmic dream of the divine. We are all having our own individual experiences. And the more we become aware of this is the more we tap into the true power of who we are. So Yogananda uh, was he was around in the early 1900s up until like 1970-ish. Don't remember the exact timing of it. However, he had a guru named Sri Yukateswar. Sri Yukateswar. And Sri Yukateswar uh, was a really cool guy, actually. I really like him. I like his, uh, the, throughout the whole book, you hear a lot of stories with him and his guru. Uh, his guru is the one that helps kind of guide him through life, through his path and getting him ready. His guru told him, um, Sri Yekteswar, who was a very compassionate, wise guy, wise man, told him uh, to get a college degree because when he came over to the West, they will take you more serious if you have a college degree. So Yogananda went and got a college degree and Sri Yekteswar was like this guy that had this, um, this really cool beard, this really cool like white beard, white hair, um, and he had and lived on this ashram that was like ancestrally handed down. It's like actually a very nice ashram that he lived on. And that's where Yogananda spent a lot of time with Sri Yogeshwar. Now, the first one I want, the first story I'm gonna share with you is 
and has to do with actually something that happens later in the book. Sri Yukteswar, who is a really wise, cool character, <laughs> guy, who was very enlightening and enlightened, he eventually passed away after Yogananda moved to the States. He moved to teach yoga and Kriya yoga to that of the United States. What he wanted to do was to merge that of the Western philosophy of materialism and the Eastern philosophy of the ancient wisdom and say, we can have both. So he came to the West, he did that for many years. He left his guru, which was very sad for him. And about so many years in, eventually he got this telepathic message from his guru, come back to India. This is before there were like telephones where it was so easy to connect to people on the other side of the world. It took weeks to get back. So his guru said, hey, I don't have much time left. I'm getting ready to leave my body. So come back to India and um, and and come back now, you know, come back and see me before I leave. And he said, okay, so he took a couple weeks to get there, he got there, and he spent the last couple months with Sri Yogeshwar. Sri Yogeshwar passed away and Yogananda was very sad. A period of time later, Sri Yogeshwar comes back from the dead and sees Yogananda. Yogananda's in meditation, Sri Yogeshwar appears in front of him. What Yogananda says is that Sri Yogeshwar does not just appear in front of him in his mind, he literally is in front of him. It's like as if me and you were talking in real life and I was there. That's how it felt for Yogananda. So what happens then is Sri Yogeshwar explains to Yogananda what happens after life, a life after death, what happens in the astral realms, explains to him how reality works. And it's this whole long chapter. It's chapter number 43. It's... Um, explains to him all of this metaphysical stuff about how reality is and how reality is a dream of the divine and how we're all here, we forget this. And what he explains is, um, is all these different, these different aspects. He says that there's a, a gross physical body, an astral body, and a causal body. The way that I interpret this, maybe through the New Age philosophies, is the gross physical body is the 3D body, the 3D physical avatar body. The, 4D bo the astral body is the 4D body, the fourth dimensional body. And the causal body, which is the, the, the thought form, it's like literally in the causal realm, things appear instantly. It's the fifth dimension. And he says what happens is when we pass away, we shed the 3D physical body, we wake up in the astral realms, which we go every single night. And what happens is in the astral realms, there's certain levels that we're able to go to depending on our level of consciousness. Real evil spirits don't, aren't, aren't able to go to the higher realms of the 4D level of consciousness, the, the astral realm. So he talks about that. Sri, tell, Sri Yogeshwar tells him about, there's about 500 to 1,000 years lifetime in the astral realm on average that we look the same, we can look the same way that we did in our life, but we look at the peak of our life, whatever age we thought we looked the best at. Sri Yogeshwar, being wise, liked his older form. So he actually looked like a glowing version of him at, at his, in his 50s. Uh, but you can take on any form that you want and you normally take on the most ideal version of yourself. He talks about the astral plants, the astral food that you eat, which is like very high vibrational and um, it contains vegetables mainly. The fifth, the, the causal realm, you only have access to if you're of a certain vibration and of a certain level of consciousness. And the higher up you go, the more heavenly like it is. And in a way, what tethers people back to the 3D reality is their, uh, is their karma. It's their, the things that they've put out that they haven't learned. It's their level of consciousness. So you go in the 4D reality somewhere depending on your level of consciousness and there's many different 4D planets is what he says as well, which I resonate with. I think that many of us have a multi-dimensional connection to many different levels of existences. We could say some of this is the Pleiades, some of this is Siri, the you know life in Sirius. Uh, there's many different planets 4D is more of an astral-like, it's much more physical than this, less physical than this, but nonetheless, what it basically shows is that there is more to life than this 3D physical body, and it goes very in detail to things that I just, it, it's amazing to me, and I love reading that chapter. I go back probably once every couple months and I read that chapter, just because it's so fascinating to me, the way that it's explained, the level of certainty that it's explained, and when you're reading this book, this book carries with it a certain vibration. And that vibration 
you can just tell resonates. You can tell, oh, this guy's not just making up all this stuff. And um, these stories are genuine stories of things that, that have happened. He's not like, oh, my mom had this experience where she was told by somebody that she would materialize a locket and she did. No, it's not, it's not you can feel whether it's, it, you just have to go within yourself and see if it resonates. And for me, the book resonates as something to, to be true, something that really happened. So that was the first story. That's uh, chapter 43 in the book that explains what happens after death in detail and really what life really is. Life is a dream. It's a fun dream that we come here to learn things and uh, we're meant to enjoy life. And when we die, there really is no death. There's just a transition. I think every night we go into the astral realms, but what happens when we die is we just finally shed the body. We don't come back to the, the 3D body, the physical gross bodies. We just hang out in the astral realm and we learn there. They're still learning to be made there. Now the second story I wanna share with you is a story that shows that life also isn't what we think it is because Sri Yaktaswar brought someone back from, the, this video is dedicated to Sri Yaktaswar because there's many different stories in this book but all three stories are with him because I, I, really, I really like him. <laughs> Sri Yaktaswar there was uh, actually this story is with Sri Yakutaswar, but of his guru who was Lahiri Mahayansa. I'm not sure how to pronounce that name, but Lahiri, we'll just say Lahiri. We'll, we'll be on a first name basis with these enlightened um, masters. Lahiri, so Yakutaswar was, was Yogananda's guru, and then Sri Yakutaswar, his guru was Lahiri on a first name basis. <laughs> We'd probably call them master or something like that. He was telling Yogananda of a story where Sri Yakuta swore. He had, or was with his guru, and he had his friend, his friend's name was Rama. And what happened is Rama got some physically, um, some detrily, detrimental disease where he was gonna die. And Lahiri told him that he didn't have to die that Rama did not have to die, who was uh, Sri Yagdaswar's friend. Well, what happens is Rama, who is Sri Yagdaswar's friend, ends up dying. Dies of this disease that he was told he didn't have much longer to live, even though Lahiri said that he would be fine. And what happens is he dies, and Sri Yagdaswar is very sad. The next day, his body, like he, he dies, I don't remember if it was at a house or a hospital or what it was, or they, their version of a hospital back in like the 1900s, early 1900s. But Rama dies, Sri Yagdaswar is very sad. He goes back to Lahiri and says, Lahiri, he ended up dying, blah, 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 blah. And he was very sad. And then Lahiri says, just meditate, just meditate. And he was having trouble meditating because he was so distraught over Rama's death. What he then tells uh, Sri Yagdaswar to do is the next day, almost oh, like 24 hours later, he sees that he's still distraught over it, and he says, dear boy, grab, like, why didn't you trust me when I said it, or something like that, that I said that he would be fine. And what he did is, he then told him, said here, there was some lamp oil nearby. Gives him the lamp oil, says to go put seven drops in Rama's mouth. And he says, Sri Yagdaswar says, I, I don't think that'll work, it's, he's already been dead for over a day. And he just says, go do it. So he leaves, he goes to this house where Rama's body still is laying there. He puts seven drops into Rama's mouth and he couldn't, he could hardly believe it, but all of a sudden Rama's body starts to vibrate and he wakes up and he says, Sri or he said, Lahiri just told me to wake up and now I'm awake. And it was the seven drops of the oil that he put in the mouth that then that you woke up and it was like a miracle. So Rama was risen from the dead. I think that's actually the, the title of the chapter. Rama was risen to the dead from the seven drops of lamp oil. Now was it the seven drops of lamp oil? Let me read to you this quote that he said. I actually screenshotted it because it will kind of explain it. It's like why would, why would all of that happen? But India is a very mystical type land. So let me show you what he said. So Finish the awesome story. Um, Paramahansa Yogananda asked Sri Yogdasur, why did the guru use castor oil? oil? Child, he says, giving the oil had no meaning except that I expected, I expected something material and Lahiri Mahansaya chose the nearby oil as an objective symbol 
for awakening my greater faith. The master allowed Rama to die because I had partially doubted. But the divine guru knew that inasmuch as he had said the disciple would be well, the healing must take place, even though he had to cure Rama of death, a disease usually final. So, he says, I told you twice. So, the uh, Lahiri Mahan Masaya told Sri Yukteswar, I told you twice that Rama would be well. Yet you could not fully believe me, Lahiri said. I did not mean the doctors would be able to cure him. I remarked only that they were in attendance. There was no causal connection between the two statements. I didn't want to interfere with the physicians. They have, they have to live too. In a voice resounding with joy, the guru added, always know that the inexhaustible Paramahantman, I'm not sure what that meant. But anyways, in general, what that shows is that people can literally that is possible when it's, it's not them doing it. It's not like Lahiri cured him. He allowed this divine presence and divine certainty to flow through. A lot of what you learn in autobiography of a yogi is this divine energy that flows through. I was reading another Paramahansa Yogananda book and what he talked about was he did something similar. He allowed this divine energy to flow through when after some lady died, that was having breathing problems or something. He was with the whole family. The husband was crying and he asked for the divine to flow through him. He went like put his hand over her head and tapped her on the chest or something like that. And she was laying in his bed and she came back alive. And he says that there's stuff like this can happen. So it kind of shows us that there's more to reality than what we think. Um, but it's, it's a lot of times when people would try to do something like that, they would do it from the sense of ego. So people can be brought back from the dead using divine intelligence, some type of divine energy that I don't understand. I'm not saying that I can do it, but this, it's, it's no one would actually do it. It'd be a divine energy that flows through. Now, the third story I want to share is kind of a funny story. It involves Sri Yakutaswar and Paramahansa Yogananda. There was one day that they decided to go to the beach and they were going for like a hike or a beach type, type uh, hike to the beach. And they left the, the, ash, the house, it's like a nice house that Sri Yakutaswar owns. And it's like, I think it was passed down to him. So I think it's a mansion. And in, in India, and what they did is like a lot of devotees come there and there's a lot of people that are like learning from Sri Yukteswar and Paramahansa is like one of the leaders there, um, like his right hand man in a way. And what happens is, is the, the Sri Yukteswar gives Paramahansa Yogananda these six beautiful heads of cauliflower that later they're going to make stew with. Gives them to him. Paramahansa Yogananda puts it in a certain spot in his room and they say, okay, let's go for a hike. And they say, okay. So they leave the house. They're almost all the way to the beach and they're talking and Sri Yukteswar being his, him and his ninja mind powers, his enlightened ninja mind powers goes Paramahansa Yogananda. They don't, I, it's called them something other than that. But that's his, uh, <laughs> that's the name that I know him by. Paramahansa Yogananda. Did you lock the back door before you left? And what he said was, is, is uh, Paramahansa Yogananda thought about it and couldn't remember if he locked the back door or not. And Sri Yogananda says, you did not lock the back door. You did not close it. Your carelessness has just caused you one cauliflower. And Paramahansa Yogananda thought about how uh, weird that was that he said that. Like how mystical, what do you mean? It cost me one cauliflower. Well, what happened was Sri Yakutaswar had one of the nearby peasants close to the house, like a peasant, like a beggar or something like that, that wasn't in the house, go through the back door, like go through the back door, go into the house and grab just one cauliflower and then leave. So they get back to the house. And he checks and he was right. He took one of the cauliflowers, left five, took one cauliflower and, and Yogananda had a whole bunch of very expensive gold jewelry and very meaningful gold jewelry he was worried was gonna be stolen. None of it was touched. This guru, this peasant took just that, just the one, the one cauliflower. And the explanation for it was having that level of consciousness, what he was able to do was tap into the energy of the, the peasant or the person that was a beggar 
and influence him to walk inside the house to take one cauliflower and to leave. And it probably benefited the person too because then he had a cauliflower. But why was he able to do that? Well, it explains, and what Paramahansa Yogananda says is that years later, they proved the power of the radio frequency. Everything is vibration and everything is different rates of vibration. And what these enlightened gurus are able to do, what we're able to do as well, by the way, is tap into different frequencies. And he was able to tap into the frequency of that of the beggar and influence him to walk in, grab that one cauliflower and to leave. So I know it sounds like a random story, but it always kind of stood out to me. It's like cauliflower is kind of like a pattern interrupt. But in general, what that proves is that, and it shows, is that reality is much more flexible than we think. Reality is these cosmic vibrations. The more we tap into who we really are and we realize this divine essence of who we are, the more we tap into this magic that is available to all of us. So the key to this though, is to first off, raise our level of consciousness. When we raise our level of consciousness, we then begin to shift into having more of these type of abilities. So something that you will see in the top of the description box below is a meditation that will help you to shift your level of consciousness so that you tap into more of these abilities. Listen to that, medita that meditation for 21 days. I think it will absolutely transform your life if you do so. You can read the comments to see what is possible as well. Other than that, turn on the notifications if you want to see more videos like this. I'll be doing more videos that are a little bit more raw like this where I share some of the most powerful ideas I've learned. Um, if you like these type of videos, let me know. It's a little bit different than the, the traditional videos that I do right over there. And um, I got a lot more good stuff coming, but the way YouTube does it now is you actually, I have to hit the notification bell to see the daily vids. So if you want to see more, hit that notification bell. Other than that, as always, peace, much love, and namaste.